me tell you something. There's cameras you see. So I forgot to scan it. There's cameras you don't see. There was no forgetting. It just got thrown in the back. Don't stop my card. What are you doing? Hundreds of people getting arrested. I'm talking about a knock at your door in the middle of the night. Here's why, as a criminal defense attorney, I advise most people to steer clear of self-checkout. You've got far more customers going to who think, hey, you know what, I can take advantage of the opportunities that these systems present for me to get something for free. Do I look like a thief? Yeah, I'm banned from Walmart, um, over a bag of Reese's. Walmart self-checkout thinking I'm stealing when I'm not. Two weeks later, I had a warrant out for my arrest and I went to jail. You're in the grocery store heading towards the exit with a full cart, when you notice there isn't a checkout clerk in sight. Your only option is to use the self-checkout. Halfway through scanning items, you have an issue with one of the barcodes. An attendant comes over and helps you with the item, and stays to assist with the rest of your cart. Once all the items have been scanned, you pay and head towards the exit. Before you make it out the door, a security guard steps in front of you and accuses you of stealing. Surprised by the accusation, you tell him you just finished paying. You're telling the truth. But he doesn't believe you. Hurt, angry, and confused, you refuse to put up with this. You push your cart full of groceries that you just bought over to customer service and return all of the items, vowing never to shop at a Walmart again. Two weeks later, the police show up with a warrant for your arrest. You have no choice but to comply as they take you away from your family and bring you to jail. So who is self-checkout for? Is it for the consumer's convenience? Or is it just so corporate can save money by passing the labor onto the consumer? And is theft from big chain stores a victimless crime? Or are we the unknowing victims? Regardless of what side you're on, petty theft is on the rise and we are already beginning to see and feel the consequences. the humble self-checkout lane. Those kiosks that give customers the employee experience. You know, sans paycheck. But while social media posts that sarcastically suggest customers will soon be operating Walmart semi-trucks on top of their self-checkout duties might encourage shoppers to take advantage of their newfound positions as cashiers. Swiping a free item or two is easier said than done. Since we last discussed this subject back in March, these machines have continued to evolve not to meet the demands of customers, but in the words of Hitchcock's classic romantic thriller, to catch a thief. Yet, despite AI-equipped surveillance systems that fly customer suspicious activity, our digital eye has perfect vision, and it never needs a coffee break or a day off. And flashy new cameras that do their best to remind shoppers Big Brother is watching. So every time you scan something, it takes pictures of you, my dude. And let me just tell you, every time that you run your card through a Walmart scanner, they have a note of it. <laughs> so that they can find you by your credit card. Retailers haven't been able to curb customers of their $100 billion shoplifting problem. And unfortunately, since Walmart CEO Doug McMillan sounded the alarm in December 2022. If that's not corrected over time, prices will be higher right. and or stores will close. The in-person shopping experience across various chains has only gotten worse. Grocery stores used to be my happy place. Then they started locking up the detergent. This is the headline to the op-ed professor of sociology at UC San Francisco, Stacey Torres, recently wrote for the Los Angeles Times. In response to the latest tactics businesses have implemented to punish paying customers for crimes they didn't commit. You can't keep your tide on the shelves anymore? No, which is a big inconvenience for the customer and for the worker. In the piece, Stacy explained that excursions to stores that once nourished our sociability now strip our dignity by dehumanizing shoppers who don't have the technological capabilities or disposable income to shop online by storing the products they need behind lock and key. And detergent isn't the only product that's now out of customers' arms reach. Yep, in the year of 2023, Perfume no longer lines the shelves of Sephora. They just had the tester of the fragrances out now. They just keep them all locked up. Chains and security lids at pharmacies are needed to safeguard ice cream. It's a high theft item. Oh, yeah, it's, it's people it's could take ten and run out of the store. And aisles at some CVS locations host shrines to toilet paper that was once proudly displayed. Instead of just letting people see what's in stock, they are putting pictures of their toilet paper in picture frames. Even Dollar Tree has begun protecting their budget merchandise like fine jewelry. 
And this issue isn't limited to North America. Stores in the UK have started putting dummy coffee on the shelves, fitting steak and cheese with security tags, and locking away chocolate bars that cost as little as £1.35 since shoplifting has returned to pre-pandemic highs. And, of course, when it comes to drastic measures to deter retail theft, Walmart is never the exception. What's up, Walmart? Get it together. Why are you locking things up that you're actively recording? In fact, it seems an increasing number of the retailer's stores have taken up the practice of hiding their products from thieves, as well as paying customers. They not playing. They standing on big business. <laughs> yeah. Y'all, it was not like this last week. <laughs> it was not like this yesterday. One user joked, they fed up, and it seemed customers were just as dissatisfied as the store. From the level of surveillance, might as well have a personal employee walking with you at this point, to the inconvenience. And nobody's going to be around to open the door. That's right, retailers weren't just taking the enjoyment out of their customers' time by locking up merchandise, they were wasting it. As one user commented, My pet peeve is workers don't assist you fast. Like, now I'm waiting 20 plus for a worker to show up. I'm gone. And this wait to access the bare essentials can become even more unbearable should customers require, perish the thought, different items from different departments. In total, it took 40 minutes to pick up three items and proceed to check out at the same Walmart. But while one user commented, I just go to Target, LOL, who has time? Shop hopping might not be the solution customers are looking for. After losing a whopping $500 million to shoplifting, Target locations too have made some not so customer friendly changes, from locking up bare essentials like underwear to entire cosmetic departments. Bro, this is crazy. They're locking up the toothpaste and the body wash. As for the effect, well, let's just say it doesn't inspire much tenderness from the retailer's clientele. It is old, the dystopian nightmare that is my Target now. And while Target CEO Brian Cornell has claimed that customers are giving the store a big thank you for keeping merchandise stocked behind lock and key, shoppers that are surprised the chain's still in business suggest otherwise. It takes away from the pleasures of shopping. But locking away merchandise isn't the only way retailers are channeling the atmosphere of jailhouses. Take, for example, one Walmart in Atlanta that was reopened after closing earlier this year with the addition of an in-house police station. And then there's the issue with the missed scan detection, the AI program used by Walmart that we previously discussed the limits of in March. See, in an article by Wired, employees at the retailer allege the technology provided by the company Everseen may catch some thieves, but that's not without flagging a substantial amount of innocent customers along the way. Recently, this has caused shoppers to have their videos displayed on self-checkout monitors when a missed scan is mistakenly detected, a feature that seems confrontational to shoppers that feel like they're being accused of a crime. You can clearly see I scanned the chicken, but then the machine thinks I stole it. It says potential miss scan, aka potential theft, but I didn't steal it, so the man had to come over there and put his code in. Still, sometimes it isn't a screen accusing customers, but a member of the store's asset protection team. According to Insider, former U.S. Marine Charles Brisby was publicly humiliated when he had a Walmart worker reach into his bag at self-checkout and ask if he was going to pay for an energy drink mix he had already bought. Similarly, a Reddit post from alleged Walmart employee claimed they were shopping at the retailer on their day off and were using self-checkout when an employee snatched their cart and said they had to go pay at the only cash register. The poster wrote, I thought it was weird and it left me thinking maybe I shouldn't work at the store any longer and definitely should not go to this Walmart for groceries since they thought I was stealing. Yet this confrontation doesn't always happen at the register. See, retailers have implemented a new way to make sure self-checkout customers aren't leaving with more loot than they paid for. Receipt checks. Yep, employees are stopping their patrons at the door to double check that they paid for everything in their cart. And customers aren't a fan of the implication. I don't like that they're painting us all with the same brush, that uh, they're assuming that everyone who uses self-checkout is gonna steal. Especially when they feel targeted, racially or otherwise. Do I look like a thief or what? 
And while these complaints have inspired jokes at the expense of these shoppers, Somebody wrote to Walmart and said, hey, guess what? I refuse to be my own cashier and then show my receipt at the front door. So I made my own Walmart Facebook page and said, thank you for the feedback, but before we can help you with your issue, we'll need to see your receipt. They're like, you've missed the point entirely. The point was most likely on your receipt which we have not seen. Many customers feel they shouldn't be penalized for the retail theft epidemic that's largely been attributed to organized crime. These are criminal enterprises that organize, plan, and orchestrate groups of shoplifters who go in and steal often and large quantities of theft. And if stores are giving patrons the employee privilege to check out their own items, according to some, a level of faith should be given in return. Or, as one Twitter user put it, you can either trust me to do self-checkout, or you can put your cashiers back in place like they used to be. I'm not interested in proving that I did your job for you. But if shoppers are dubbed guilty upon entrance into a store, are there any laws that exist to protect them? Unfortunately, the answer to that question isn't so straightforward. See, a merchant can only legally detain a customer if they have probable cause that the customer is stealing. And simply using self-checkout, well, isn't exactly criminal behavior. Stores don't have the right to detain customers to prevent them from leaving and to demand that they show their receipt before they leave the store and check that the items in their basket or their bag match the items on the receipt. But not so fast. After all, as customers who have tried to simply bypass the receipt check will tell you, have it. But I'm just saying legally, I don't have to show it to you. This isn't so easily done. Don't stop my cart. What are you doing? And that's because not stopping can give the stores probable cause they need to detain you. But it it's not mandatory, though. I can leave your store right now without the police being called on me. Like, yeah, I'm not, not stealing the, yeah. because I paid for my item. But if we ask you for a receipt and you don't, we do call the cops. This means it's recommended to err on the side of caution and stop, especially at membership stores like Costco, where you've signed on to their terms. However, there is one way customers can make their dissatisfaction with their protocol known, and that's by taking away their business. This is how Walmart is. It's what we do to protect assets to keep the prices low. Okay, so I guess I'm just, I just, I'm gonna return my items then. Okay. But when it comes to self-checkout, criminal defense attorney Carrie Jernigan warned her TikTok followers against using the machines altogether, as when it comes to asset protection at retail stores, there's no differentiation between those who intentionally steal and those who unintentionally steal. They have lost all sympathy and they are just taking a tell it to the judge approach. So while self-checkout machines are a breeding ground for malfunctions and user error, it is so easy to make a mistake on these machines. Yeah. People have a full shopping cart, they're putting it in, they forget to scan something, or the machine just doesn't work. Intent might matter in the court of law, but it doesn't matter in the self-checkout line, where claiming the machine did it or that it was an honest mistake has become about as believable as the dog ate my homework. Some of them say, oh, I forgot, or I scanned, but I just didn't realize it didn't come up. They'll always have an excuse. Even if a shopper returns home from a successful grocery run without any confrontation, weeks or months down the line, when inventory comes up short on a certain item, security can find the last person who checked out with that merchandise and pin the blame on them. Hundreds of people getting arrested across the country, and I'm not talking about just in store. I'm talking about a knock at your door in the middle of the night. Which can lead to a criminal record, or worse. And because of who these big box stores are, they usually have to present very little evidence to get an affidavit for warrant signed. The charges that could land you up to a year in jail get filed. And while you may eventually be found innocent, when it comes to the time and money you waste clearing your name, well, that's non-refundable. However, according to lawyer Stephanie Holin, customers should be more concerned about the confidential information they're willingly entering into these machines. You are standing there putting in your own, you know, sliding your card, doing whatever, punching in your code, and there are cameras watching you. I would be a lot more concerned that somebody's watching me to get my information than I would be that they're gonna accuse me of stealing an item. And it seems Stephanie might be onto something when you look at the latest way thieves are outsmarting the self-checkouts at the expense of paying customers. Take a look at this security footage from a Walmart in New York that showcases three suspects allegedly attaching a credit card skimmer to a self-checkout machine. This piece of equipment allowed them to steal data and pins from customers that use the machine, and it's a scam the trio pulled off at 16 different Walmart locations across New York and Maine. 
Working in unison, authorities say they installed the skimmers, one on the lookout, in this case, shielding the register with her scarf, while another places the device over the top of the card machine. And if you're thinking this is a smooth operation for your average petty thieves, you'd be correct. These three are part of an organized crime ring. It's a very full-scale operation. You have the people who make the devices, then they'll hire a group of people that go into the stores and install the devices. And then you have the people who actually cash out the proceeds. But as retailers work to outsmart criminals like them, they're always working on the next front. We stop them one way and they find another way to do it. Customers are considered guilty until proven innocent. See, while asset protection has caught full families red-handed, slammed shoppers who try to add a few freebies to their bag at self-checkout with first-degree retail fraud charges and expose what should be upstanding members of society as common crooks through flashy technology with dystopian implications, workers have also allegedly been forced into hostile situations when anti-theft technology tattles on customers that don't take a missed scan, receipt check, or security involvement involvement lightly. Customers have reportedly thrown things at employees. And despite big claims when it comes to this technology's capabilities and presence in stores. Let me tell you something. There's cameras you see, there's cameras you don't see. Its observations aren't always accurate, which can lead to innocent shoppers being accused of theft. You guys treat everybody like this? Ma'am, we have treated you with utmost respect. You, you drug me through Walmart I like I stole you and you said us. go to the room and give her my ID. This Can on I, the bottom has not been scanned, ma'am. No, they were scanned. I did scan them on the gun. Not. I did scan them. She just told see. you. She's showing you. I scanned them, sir. Yeah, Apology. Well, thank you. Take, for example, Paige Warren, a Walmart customer that was leaving a store in Texas with $31 worth of ingredients for Rice Krispie treats when an employee stopped her to inform her that she hadn't scanned a $5 bag of Reese's Pieces. Paige apologized and claimed she had thought she'd scanned the item and started taking out her debit card to pay for the missed purchase. But the employee said she couldn't do that and instead had to come with them. An interaction Paige had the forethought to record. But despite the customer's questioning, and I don't understand why I can't just walk back and pay for my bag of Reese's and go outside with my children. And reasoning, don't you think if I wanted to steal everything, I'd just walk out? Walmart wasn't convinced of her innocence. So I forgot to scan it. There, there was no forgetting and just got thrown the back. Their interrogation of Paige continued for roughly an hour while her husband waited in the car with their kids. I'm starting to panic because I'm just in this room with them and they're not listening to me. I'm just like almost in tears. I'm, I'm ready to cry. And while charges weren't pressed, she was left with a ban from the store, as well as a valuable lesson. I do not use self-checkout. I do not want to be accused of something like that again. And Paige isn't the first customer to allegedly become a target for criminal allegations after using the self-checkout. In 2021, Amber Groom was out of Wegmans with her two children after a brutal workday. This particular day, I just came off the, the day before from working a 14-hour shift at the hospital in the COVID units. So tired, exhausting. And that exhaustion showed at the self-checkout when she allegedly forgot to scan one of her bags. Still, she exited the store no problem. They didn't stop me at the door. It was only days later a warrant was put out for her arrest. The charge? Petty larceny. Yeah, I made a mistake, an honest mistake, but I wish they would have came to me about it. So Amber appealed, and after the case was heard by a judge a second time, she was found not guilty due to no proof of intent. In a statement to NBC12, Wegmans Corporate wrote that they were disappointed by the ruling as they had video evidence of Ms. Groom leaving their store without paying for close to $250 in merchandise. But as the story of Marquona Tippins proves, it isn't just customers that have been threatened to write the legal system a check. See, in 2022, the mother of five was having trouble scanning items at a Walmart self-checkout in Cleveland when an employee offered their assistance. Despite Marquona not being responsible for scanning the items, she was allegedly accused of theft by security. Eventually, she was let go. Still, she took a stand by returning her groceries. I was being accused of something I didn't do, and I just felt like that was a slap in the face. And that seemed like the end of the troubling incident. Until two weeks later, when Marquona was arrested and spent six hours in jail until security footage from the store exonerated her of theft. Marquona has since hired the services of attorney Steve Albans to sue the retailer for wrongful imprisonment and help prevent other Walmart customers from being similarly persecuted. That's scary for any person to think that they can literally be going about their day grocery shopping for their children, and that leads to incarceration. And if you think the little guy doesn't stand a chance against a business of that size, think again. 
See, back in 2016, Leslie Nurse was also shopping with her husband and three children at Walmart. With the help of an employee, she scanned her items at self-checkout and paid, or so she believed, before she was stopped from leaving the store by an asset protection manager. I remember going in that little room and I was like, this will be resolved. This was an accident. This wasn't on purpose. But from security's perspective, this was no accident. And despite Leslie telling them her husband had paid the full amount on his debit card, she was charged with stealing $48 worth of groceries and arrested. And while the charges were ultimately dropped when no representative for Walmart showed up to court, the damage to Leslie's reputation and career prospects due to the arrest was already done. What was worse, she continued to receive demand letters from a Walmart-affiliated law firm offering to drop the matter if she paid them $200. It was a sum she considered paying initially. At first you think, oh, well, I'll pay it and it'll all go away. But then I'm like, you know, I, I didn't do anything wrong. Why would I pay for something that I didn't do? Turns out this was a civil recovery law that Walmart uses in various states. From 2016 to 2017, 1.4 million Walmart customers were charged with theft, allowing the company to collect over $315 million. With this information, Leslie filed a lawsuit in 2018 that accused Walmart of abuse of process, which in the legal world refers to the misuse of legal processes for an ulterior purpose, Walmart's being allegedly using the threat of criminal charges to make customers pay up. And it seemed a jury was inclined to believe Leslie's claim, as a unanimous verdict in 2021 awarded her $2.1 million in punitive damages. I hope it makes a difference. I don't want anybody else to have to go through this again. Despite the ruling, Walmart spokesperson Randy Hargrove claimed the company would be contesting the verdict. We continue to believe our associates acted appropriately, he said. We don't believe the verdict is supported by the evidence. But perhaps it's time for these chains to take a good, hard look in the mirror. After all, from self-cleaning machines to entirely self-checkout stores... Newly renovated Walmart, all self-checkouts. I don't see a register at all. There go your jobs. There's your $15 an hour, folks. Is it possible the steps retailers have made to push their businesses towards an automated future backfired? Well, according to experts, yes. See, while organized retail crime may be hurting businesses, a recent report from CNBC suggests internal issues are at the root of losses retailers have experienced. These internal issues include discounts, stacked inventories, employee theft, and kiosks that tempt shoppers to take a little something extra. Self-checkout machines increase the risk of theft and in some cases are outweighing the investments companies made in them. Yet the measures stores have taken to better surveil customers isn't exactly a solution to the problem. A recent survey from the Harris Poll showed that 71% of shoppers found any theft prevention methods, from locked up products to security guards, made them less likely to provide a store with their business. That number was even higher amongst Gen Z at 89% and millennials at 77%. It feels like at some point the whole store is just going to be locked up. That's what it seems like. And these aren't empty threats. Bloomberg News spoke to Andrew Lipsman, an analyst at Insider Intelligence, who noted online sales of health and beauty products that have been locked up at big box retailers have expanded from 11.4% of online sales in 2019 to 18.5% in 2023, making Walmart's targets and others' losses Amazon's gain. So what solution do these retailers have? Well, despite self-checkouts becoming increasingly ingrained in shoppers' weekly errand runs, some chains are looking for a way to blend the old ways with the new, like Costco and Walmart, where staff has begun assisting with self-checkout scans. A sign inside the store says they are testing the full-serve experience where associates will be available to scan all items, including in the self-checkout area. But while changes like this will likely appease a certain demographic of shopper... I hate self-checkout. Those machines do not work. Last resort. Last resort for me. I hate That's not the bad. I want to deal with people. They're but... very temperamental. They like to say remove this, and if it's in a bag or not in a bag, and then you gotta you gotta punch in your own produce. The younger people embrace it and love to use it more than older people. I don't see much gray hair in the self checkout line. Not every customer is enthused. It'll make grocery shopping a lot uh, longer. Some people don't want to have to talk to people in the checkout lines, so that's going to be a real bummer. And despite businesses' claims that these changes are to enhance the customer experience, it seems what's best for shoppers might be the last thing on retailers' minds. What problem are they really trying to solve here at the end of the day? And I can't imagine it's about our convenience. 
After all, when you screw up, privileges are revoked. They thought they could trust us to do our own bagging and our own scanning. <laughs> and people are showing them that maybe we can't be trusted so much. And as stores continue to close due to theft and organized retail crime, some retailers have gone to the extreme. Walmart has recently begun testing new technology in Canada aimed at cracking down on shoplifters and has introduced third-party ads to certain self-checkout lanes to capitalize on their customer base, which to potential advertisers they refer to as Super Bowl-sized audiences. And while this may not be an answer to the woes of shoppers, it seems the retailer has taken one recurring critique seriously. If uh, you're experiencing a problem with theft, Maybe you need to rethink whether or not self-checkout is, is right for your location or your store. Yep, Walmart has completely scrapped self-checkout from three stores in New Mexico. And as other retailers follow suit, it's clear this is a divisive choice, not just amongst customers. It's more personable, interact with someone, and there's jobs for people. Would you find it annoying if you couldn't use them anymore and you had to wait in the line? I would just find it annoying if the lines are too long. But employees as well. Whether it's a customer complaining a machine won't take a $100 bill from 1964 or refusing to pay attention to the directions machines have written out, self-checkout can be a frustrating experience for patron and employee alike. Or as one Walmart employee put it on Reddit, I think it should be mandatory for everyone to have to work a certain number of hours at a retail store to see just how stupid and lazy the average person is. Still, as more employees report that Walmart locations in other areas are beginning to dismantle self-checkout and that this could go company-wide in 2024, many don't believe Walmart has the workforce to handle this change. Of course Walmart would go all in on self-checkouts, mostly because prices are f high and income is f low, and then decide, nah, back up, rip them all out, but we're still not paying cashiers. Indeed, for now, it seems that the needs of employees and customers will continue to place last. If your store went full self-checkout, how big of a problem would that be for you? Huge. As profits reign supreme. So if they're losing money on one hand, they have to make up for it on another in order to please shareholders. And you can imagine that it's you and I that's paying the extra costs on these thefts. The self-checkout, a tool that was meant to be a stepping stone into the future of retail, has instead sent humankind barreling backward as these machines enable our worst instincts to steal. Technology makes things sometimes safer and better. They also make it easier for criminals. Condemn. Not stopping could give the store that probable cause they need to ask you to stop and detain you. This is the inherent risk of using self-checkout. Even if you make a mistake scanning an item, a grocery store, Walmart, wherever you're shopping, will still prosecute. Honest mistake, getting a Houston area woman banned from Walmart. And assume the worst in people. I understand it happens, but mistakes happen as well. This is the story of retail shoplifting and the way stores have evolved to combat this epidemic despite the wants and interests of their customers.